music, if the, if the South by Southwest is about anything, it's about music. Uh, it, it's about making a living from music. I mean, I think the economic reality is something that affects all our lives, but the driving force of this convention has always been the music. The music comes first. It's not how to make money from music, but it's how to make money from the music that matters to the people who make it and music that has integrity. My name is Guy Forsyth. You're watching Channel 15, the Austin Music Network, and we're backstage at the Austin Music Awards. It's incredibly appropriate, and we're extraordinarily proud at South by Southwest to have Chris Novoselic as our keynote speaker this year. In an election year, talking about political issues is something that affects our business and it affects the music that we make because we live in a political reality. We live in an, an emotional and aesthetic reality as well, and, and in, in order to address that, there's probably very few people as well equipped as Chris Novoselic, just given his career and his commitment. We're very proud to have him. Thank you very much. Here because of our involvement and uh, passion for music and if there's enough interest in or enough fear of artistic and music censorship the leaders among us here will emerge to help us guide us out of this problem so you know be there for them because they're there for you and don't don't be intimidated by government it was it was designed to be accessible so let me tell you about Jam Pack, the uh, Joint Artist and Music Promotions Political Action Committee. Jam Pack was formed in the face of a growing national climate of censorship. Since 1992, a group called the Washington Music Industry Coalition has been fighting music censorship in my home state of Washington. Jam Pack is a growth of the uh, WMIC's efforts. So, so many calls from all over the country began coming in at WMIC about attempts to censor music, that it became very apparent this is a bigger problem than the one we had in Washington State. No n knight on a white horse is going to come in and save, your, save you. It's about participation in our system of democracy. And I feel that one of the most important things that Jam Pack is exporting and encouraging is a positive attitude. We don't, we don't, we're not so much against censorship as we're for freedom of speech.
we started it, it was, uh, you know, well, we're, we're going to do this thing. We'll, we'll provide space. We, we're not making any promises. We don't know who's going to show up. But if people uh, have things to talk about, then, then this will be a place where they can do it. And, and uh, a lot of people did uh, about various things. And, uh, you know, now it's big and, and people have expectations of it. So it's, it's, it's harder now, certainly, uh, although I don't know. Thinking back to the first year, if I would have uh, thought anything could be harder, we, we had so many interminable meetings about every detail of, of everything that was going on. That, uh, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's gratifying. It's fun. You should sleep for at least two weeks straight beforehand and then participate at your own risk. It's a beautiful, beautiful struggle. Tracks ain't here, but the train's gotta run. A beautiful, beautiful struggle. You wanna be loved by everyone. It was said it was. Lisa, and Lisa, I want you to tell us what you're doing here at the convention center and the trade show. We're here representing the live music capital of the world. How do you how do you do that? That seems like a very big job. How do you represent the live music capital of the world, which of course is Austin? Showing everybody what a great city we have, how many live music venues we have, how many artists we have. I think the music awards last night was a great opportunity for everyone from out of town to see what a great base of talent we've got here. All kinds of music, varieties, and very entertaining. Um, and we do, we're able to do that every year at the awards and all during South by Southwest. It showcases local artists. It's a wonderful place. And someone was quoted in the Statesman as saying this was like an amusement park for people to come and go to all the live music venues and see. So it's fun to be able to represent the city. Hi, my name's Darren, and I'm South by Southwest staff. And how does South by Southwest help the, during the trade show to make sure everything runs smoothly? Just make sure all the exhibitors are happy and that the music over there is not too loud, and that's about all. I'm Catherine Masters, and this is Shelley Bungie. And I am the executive director of the Women in Music Business Association, which is a hardball business group for women in the music industry, all kinds of music, all levels of the music industry, from artists and uh, agents to managers to publicists to disc companies, you name it. And this is one of our members who is with... Sony Pictures Entertainment, Senior Vice President of Business Affairs. And uh, I'm here just looking, listening to music and uh, trying to find some new alternatives for music and film. Yeah, she's the one that puts the, the soundtracks to the movies that we all watch. So that's pretty impressive, isn't it? And we're here just trying to get some members and let people know what we're up to. This is 91.7 KVRX, student radio for Austin. Very excited to be on the Austin Music Network. Hi, my name's Kendall Vincent. I'm with Metropost here in Austin. We have uh, facilities at 501 East 5th Street and several other facilities that are involved with us. We uh, do everything from film to video production and also do a lot of editing, uh, nonlinear and online editing. We also have a graphic art studio that we're using a lot to, to you know, showcase a lot of the talents that are here in Austin. Uh, and uh, so we've uh, really enjoyed being a part of this and we've been a part from the very beginning, been here in 20 years, so we've been a player in the market for a long time. And uh, really enjoy this. My name is John Kurtzer from Microsoft in uh, Seattle area. Uh, we're here at South by Southwest celebrating the release of a, uh, what's called an enhanced CD or CD Extra. It's a multi artist uh, sampler, which includes a lot of different artists like Mary Chapin Carpenter and Randy Newman, who is playing at the festival this year. 
And uh, it's a music CD that's also a CD-ROM. It's called a multi-session disc. It'll play both ways on, on a CD-ROM. It'll give you lyrics, interview clips, uh, rare demos, all kinds of extra multimedia, which you wouldn't get otherwise on a, on a standard CD. This is our multi-artist sampler. You see Randy Newman here, Mary Chapin Carpenter, John Coltrane, a uh, Seattle band called Sky Cries Mary. Uh, for coffee up here, Sky Cries Mary, as you, as you jump in, you'll see the first page here. It's basically what you call the interface. It's got video clips. Jumping back a little bit, I'll show you one. Uh, there's bio information on each band member. They designed a kind of interactivity for each member. In this case, the bass player is getting ready for a show here, so you can get him dressed up for a show. And uh, let me turn the sound up here so you can hear what's going on. Sassy. I, I've been working with CD-ROMs for a while at Microsoft, and this is uh, when people see it and really try it out, they get excited about it. It's the problem is an educational thing, getting people uh, up to speed on what it's all about. What exactly do you do here at South by Southwest for people that are from out of town? Well, we try to adopt them into our little Austin family, as it were, and. Uh, mostly point them in the direction of, of uh, our favorite haunts. What am I doing here? Schmoozing up a storm, trying to remind people that uh, the, Chronicle were, uh, the Chronicle was actually one of the founders of South by Southwest, major sponsor of South by Southwest, uh, about 10 years ago when this was a much, much smaller event, and just trying to uh, get people tanked up on cake, get their sugar rush going for the whole day, keep them going. My name is Live. I'm from Denmark representing uh, Danish organizations, but mainly the Roskilde Festival. Over the years, we have found band here before they meant anything to Europe. Cop, Shoot Cop, Helmet, Bush, um, Dan Baird. But we also support Danish bands one or two every year to go over here. You know, we've had people come by asking, you know, if they're trying to book a new band, what's the best way to start? You know, if if they're wanting to get on the road and promote a band, you know, what's the best way to start? And, you know, we've got these directories here that are pretty much, you know, a guide, you know, that if you want to do it, here's, here's what you do, here's who to call. You know, we offer that. And also it's just getting our name out. You know, people see Performance Magazine, they know that we're here. You know, people who maybe aren't familiar with it, new agents or whatever coming in, you know, associates with them with it. We can build a, a contact, you know, a working relationship from there. had over 4,000 registrants in its 10th year who came from all over the world. The panels and workshops utilize the enormous cross-section of the music industry to discuss new bands, how to do business, how to control your own music, and most importantly, to learn from each other. Some of the panels and workshops this year included topics from emerging technologies to financial information for musicians. There were also panels on the music video industry. With so many videos that we get in, there has to be so much criteria to, you know, if we got less videos, I mean, there was a time when, when record labels 10 years ago and record labels didn't make all that many videos. So you basically, you know, it was everything was played. But now there's so much product that comes out that you have to be unfortunately selective and a good band like Pizzicato 5 might not make it on the air. Mm -hmm. There's so much music out there and there's so many artists that they just all become faceless. So the video kind of helps to add to that so people can understand what the band is about. And through that, uh, the feedback that we've got from musicians has been quite incredible in terms of them saying that being on the, the network was equivalent to doing 200 gigs. And now that they've, they've got, you know, now people in town know them and people are coming to them because they've seen them, which is our job to promote music. As a volunteer, I worked on the panels, um, just helping coordinate the panels and make sure everything went smoothly. What was your favorite panel? I think why rock criticism sucks was a lot of fun. There was a lot of interaction and uh, a lot of a lot of good points made. There's nothing in a new world. Oh, you beautiful girl. Ain't no river running so deep. Ain't no willow.
could I have your love? I'd rather your love, babe. I'd rather your love. Ain't no mountain that is high. Stop the birds in the sky. Ain't nobody gonna slow me down. Climb Mount Everest, crawl on the ground. I'm after your love. Could I have your love? I'm after your love, babe. I'm after your love. Oh. There's nothing in a dim world. Uh. Oh, you beautiful girl. I'm after your love. With the Lizard Dawn. We are Remy Zero. Uh, I am Cedric Lemoyne. I'm Sinjin. I'm Jeffrey Kane. Gregory. Hello, I'm Dirt, and I'm Mr. Merengue. And, and we're Mr. Merengue together. Hi, I'm Angie Carlson from Grover. Hey, hey we're, we're the borrowers. borrowers. You're on watching. The, the Austin <laughs> Music Network. Television from the live music, music capital, capital of the world, world. Austin, Austin, Texas. Texas. Hi, this is Johnny Gowdy. I'm Chipper Tate from The Walking Dead. Hey, this is AJ Vallejo with the band Vallejo. Uh, hello, this is Earth Pig from the uh, rock band Earth Pig and Fire. This is Malcolm Wellborn with the Killer Bees. My name's Eric Mall. I'm Jake. I'm Dan. I'm John. We're Semisonic. Hi, this is Plum. Hi, I'm Anthony from Garden Variety. I'm Anthony from Garden Variety. I'm Joe from Garden Variety. Geraldine Haas from The Mysteries of Life. And I'm Jake Smith. I'm Ken, and I am absolutely raging on fire to be here right now. Joe Skyward. Brian. Uh, and I'm John. And we're the Posies, and you're watching the Austin Music Network. Thank Very God. Good. Hey there, this is Peter Stewart from Dogs Eye View. When he was 15 years old, already balding, thin basketball etched frame continuously, nervously, banging against the box only he could see, my friend Frank robbed a Kentucky Fried Chicken with a fork. He courted the girl that worked at her off time. Her girlfriend thought she was way off to go out with a boy that talked like an electric circuit. They had it all worked out, except she must have got cold feet on the day of the robbery, because she called in sick. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon, in the 85-degree blue-collar melancholy sun, disguised in his brother's red and yellow striped wool ski mask, an arm with a stainless steel fork, and 15 years of Catholic Italian longings, Frank ran into the Kentucky Fried Chicken on the corner of Grant Boulevard and Butternut, and finding no one behind the counter, he yelled to the two people sitting at the booth, eating their original recipe breasts. Everybody hit the deck, and they looked up at him, and they laughed. My name's Casey Monahan. I'm the director of the Texas Music Office and the Governor's Office. My name's Brent Grolke, and I'm the creative director for South by Southwest. He, he, he's the guy that people like to hate about you this time because they didn't get their showcase, but actually he's a very lovable, lovable, oh, I'm sorry, lovable guy. What happens is, well, the balance is roughly, we had a, less than 100 uh, major label sign bands. We had about 300 and 17, 18, something like that, uh, indie bands. And then we had somewhere around 200 completely unsigned or self-label acts. So the vast majority are still unsigned or are on small, small labels. Um, but what happens is we need to have the major label bands for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of which is that they bring with them the record industry. Their managers come, their attorneys come, their agents come, the label staff comes. Those are the people that the unsigned bands largely want to meet. And so they bring that, uh, that group of people. So we need to have those bands. So the unsigned or smaller bands are seen by the people that they want to be seen by.
Right, this is Mr. Lifto and the Enigma, Katzen and Steve. We're from the Jim Rose Circus Sideshow and you're watching Austin Music Network. A lot of people passed out on the curbs. <laughs> Well, my name is Jim Swift, and I've been a member of the Austin Softball Empire Association for about nine years, I think, nine or ten. It sort of swirls by after a while. But I've done this, goodness, I don't know, three or four years in a row. Um, it's by far the best tournament of the year. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. It's, it's sort of relaxed, and at the same time, we follow the rules, and we just have a wonderful time. Very bunch of people, and I enjoy it very much. about 12 or 15 paid staff and then some part-time paid staff who plan this uh, and uh, who try to have everything necessary to make it happen. Um, but it is actually the volunteer staff, the unpaid staff, who come in and in three months figure out with us how to make this run. And they run South by Southwest and we couldn't do it without them. had the bright idea to do them all at the same time and create sort of 10 days of creative madness or mayhem or whatever you want to say and it's I think really working well people go to films and then they go out to clubs and the whole thing is working it, it, music and film and multimedia all at the same time it's, been a, it's a pretty rapid growth for multimedia in year one, it started off as a track of the film conference and the film festival. The fall, it, since it was so huge and well received in Austin, we decided to do two separate events, film and multimedia. And uh, it's been a real rapid growth for multimedia this year.
was just going to say for Roland, uh, I remember one interview you did about three years ago, and they asked you that kind of that question, and they said, he, uh, you said, well, I was a manager, and I couldn't figure out how to meet all these people in the industry, so I started an event so I could meet these people so I could be a successful manager, and now you're in a semi-successful event director, you yeah, know? I never want to be a manager. I never, ever want to be a manager. <laughs>